Hey, this is Movie Edge, and this is going to be my Disney Movie Collection Series Part 4, and it's going to be the live action movies. I got a big stack here, and um, I'm just going to go right through them. I'm not going to uh, ponder on, uh, you know, reviewing anything, but... Um, if I do see a good one that's my favorite, I'll talk about it a little bit. Um, I'm going to start off with not one of my favorite series, but it is a good series. The Pirates of the Caribbean series. And this is Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl. This is, this is the best one out of the whole series. i got to make some room here. All right. Next, number two is Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest. It wasn't as great as the first one, but it still had its great, it still had elements to it that were, you know, pretty good. Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. This one didn't care for that much. It had its moments where... I don't, I don't know. It just, it was, it was missing something that the first and the second one had that 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 this one didn't, and um, yeah, I don't know. Didn't really care for the third one. Mm. But the next one, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean on Strange Ties, I actually loved. I actually loved this one. It actually started a new storyline. Uh, to the Pirates of the Caribbean series. Yeah, and I got the really cool slip. Yeah. I didn't get the 3D version of this because it was more money, but I got the regular version. And, um, yeah, this one I really enjoyed. Yeah. And then finally, one that I have to actually still check out is um, Pirates of the Caribbean uh, Dead Man Telling All Tales. Why in the UK it's called Salazar's Revenge, I have no clue. But, um, yeah, whatever. It's two different titles. Get on the same page, Disney. Uh, <laughs> this one I want to check out soon. I just haven't had the time. I got. The, I love the slipcase on this. And, uh, yeah. So, that's the Pirates of the Caribbean series now I'm just gonna just random ones that I, I didn't really put into any kind of order starting with uh, Dwayne Johnson uh, race to Witch mountain this was a good one I seen this um I think on the Disney Channel at one point and I'm like wow it's a really good movie it's really a lot of action adventure and stuff like that the original um, Witch Mountain series was basically, um, I think, three, two or three films, which they never continued on to this one. And uh, it's a shame, because it was fun. It was a fun movie. Fun watch. This one I haven't checked out yet. It is The Finest Hours. And, um, yeah, I hope to check this one out soon. This is, uh, it's based on the incredible true story. Yeah. So, yeah, I can't wait to check that one out. Next. You got a lot of, got a lot of, um, disappointing reviews, but the BFG. And, um, strange thing is, is that the BFG in, in, like, other parts of the world and stuff wasn't distributed by Disney it was distributed by other companies so uh, I don't know it's a Steven Spielberg directed movie it was under a Blaine Entertainment but why in other parts of the world was this released not through Disney but I don't know I still have to check it out I know I'm kind of behind in movies Heavyweights. Yes, I finally got my hands on this uh, not too long ago. 
at uh, Second and Charles. And I uh, hope to check this one out soon as well. Uh, actually, i seen someone's review on YouTube saying that they you know, always talking about this movie. And so I'm like, Ben Stiller made a Disney movie called Heavyweights? Never heard of it. But now I have it so I can check it out. And it was written by Judd Apatow and uh, some of his early work. So, you know, executive produced by Judd Apatow as well. I, I'm, a Judd, I'm a Judd Apatow fan, so, um, yeah, can't be that bad. Finally in this stack, Alexander and the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. I actually got to say it. All right. This I seen... Um, I want to say on Stars, I seen this, and it was a really good movie. Steve Carell was hilarious in it. Um, so I wanted to get it on Blu-ray, so I got it through Disney Movie Club, and actually I got it through Disney Movie Rewards, so I got this one for free. Um, it's your, it's it's based off of a book, I think, but it's your typical, your typical fashion. In um, the lines of um, live-action Disney movies, I mean, it's nothing to say. Hey, this is a great film, you know. I remember it. It's something you're gonna remember. No, you're actually not gonna. It's not really memorable, but it was funny. Yeah. All right, let's get to some of these films. I got some slipcover ones here. It's hard to get the ones with the slip covers if they're older. One of my favorite Disney movies, and I was psyched when this came out on Blu-ray. Tron. Yeah, the original classic. This one, it blew me away uh, when I was a kid. I, I, I didn't see this at the theater, no. Uh, I seen it on VHS, and you know how VHS quality is, and it was a square screen, and yeah, that was before HD and all that other stuff, but it still blew me away. This movie on Blu-ray is just fantastic, and um, the one part that they should have edited back in, at least the director should have, was, uh, or at least Disney, was a deleted scene. And, um, yeah, they, they should have put the deleted scene back. It, it was a great scene, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, it was where, um, I think Jeff Bridges stopped for a second, and he was with, uh, I forgot her name, I forgot her name, but the female in, in the cast, and she stopped, and she kind of, transformed into this dress she put her hair down and stuff beautiful scene why they cut it out I don't know but this my favorite freaking live action Disney movie yes if it ever gets um 4k release I might upgrade and I don't upgrade that much to 4k now the one that kind of disappointed me but not all the way Tron Legacy. Tron Legacy was a movie that I had high hopes for, but kind of they dropped the ball. They dropped the ball big time on this. Um, Olivia Wilde was great in this movie, and uh, the um, the CG was kind of awful. And I'm not talking about the CG where they're in the court playing and the video games and stuff like that. No, I'm not saying about that. I'm talking about where they made, um, how's it, Jeff Bridges? Um, they made him look younger. And if you can see it right here, yeah, they made him look younger. But it was in compare to, say, other movies... No, they didn't do a good job at all. Not at all. Tron Legacy. I'll still watch it. I'm still a fan of it. I hope 
they do make a third movie or if Disney when they release their uh, Netflix type channel um, hopefully they make a series of it yeah uh, okay next I have uh, Prince of Persia seen this once and um, it was pretty good and um, you know I this is like Jake Gyllenhaal yeah he did a really good job in it not really that bad but um, yeah it could have been more storyline could have been more action all right let me get another stack out and I'll be right back okay I'm back and uh, got another stack here to go through starting off with John Travolta Robin Williams in Old Dogs also starring Seth Green um, a lot of people give this movie crap like it's not funny but you know what I actually found this amusing enjoyable and um, yeah I mean, Matt Dillon's in it, too. And who else? Um, Kelly Preston. You know, so if you, just, if you just wanna, you know, just laugh, you know, shut your mind off, have a popcorn flick, this is awesome. You know, old school. Oh, old dogs. What did I say, old school? <laughs> old dogs, all right. Next, this is basically my wife's pickup. We didn't actually even see this yet. We found it at a second, and, you know, um, half price books for a good price. And it came with a slip. And it's Cinderella, the live action Cinderella. And uh, it also comes with the short on it, Frozen, Frozen Fever, uh, theatrical short. Um, let me show you that right there. But you can also get that on, um, there's another uh, a set that uh, Disney put out with um, a whole bunch of shorts on it. So you can get it on that as well. Um, this one, she wanted to check out. So one day we'll check it out. There's one I wanted to see and she wanted to see. Um, Emma Watson in... Um, Beauty and the Beast. The the special effects on this looks great. And, um, I mean, why not? The cast is, is outstanding. And, um, you got, uh, uh, if I could see, you got um, Emma Watson, Luke Eves, Josh Gatt, Ian McGregor, Stanley Tucci, um, Emma Watson and Emma Thompson. Oh, wow, two Emmas in one movie. Anyway, this got really great reviews and everything. Despite they made a big deal about the gay character, it doesn't bother me. That's the way it was ever since it was a play and stuff on um, Broadway and stuff. So it's like. Why are you going to make a big deal about that? That's so stupid. Um, Josh Cat did a real good job at it. You know, the music in this. It, I seen clips from it. I didn't see the whole movie, but yeah, did a really good job. So, Beauty and the Beast. Next, this is another one of my wife's pickups. But, I have to admit, I checked it out and I liked it. Because of the director, Gary Marshall, rest in peace. Uh, Princess Diaries 1 and 2. Uh, there's supposed to be a third one in the works, but I don't know how it's going to be without the director. Uh, he directed both of these. And, uh, yeah, Gary Marshall, you could tell his hand was in this, but, uh, yeah, to make a third one, these were both G rated movies. To make a third one, it's like a PG 13, or PG or PG 13 movie that would kind of ruin the series. But, um, good movies. I mean, well, we're checking out. Got the slip with it. That was cool. Uh, next, 
lot of people give this movie crap too, but I kind of liked it. And that is Oz the Great and Powerful. Now you see how it makes, you catch that, you see how it makes the rainbow effect on here? I was, um, that is meaning that this was the first edition release of the slipcover. After that, they stopped doing that effect. So if you don't have that effect on yours, it's a second edition slipcover or a third or whatever. Um, that I didn't know until I looked it up online. Um, but it looks great with that, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. This movie was fun. It um, had some great special effects. But it also had a lot of stuff that didn't make sense uh for honest just this doll she doesn't show up in the in the original wizard of oz uh, and the monkey where did the monkey go in the original wizard of oz if it wasn't there you know it was just the uh you know the old man in the in the, in the castle so that kind of you know stuff they shouldn't have put in unless it it made sense with the first movie. Yeah. Ah, there's one I have not seen yet, but um, wanted to. Tomorrowland with George Clooney. Now this one got a lot of crap too, and I did not see it, so I can't really comment on it. And um, yeah, that's all I got to say about that. Can't comment on it. Um, this one I did see. Uh, Slipcover's a little beat up, but that was because of Disney Movie Rewards and the packages and the U.S. Postal Service. Saving Mr. Banks. Tom Hanks did a great job of playing Walt Disney in this movie. And um, um, Emma Thompson, great job. And there was a third person. Who, who was a third person in here? Uh, Saving Mr. Banks. Da, blah, 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 da, 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 Come on, you're not on here? Paul Giamatti's in it. Jason Sportsman really did a good job. Um, Colin Firth. And J.B. Novak from... Um, from Office, from The Office. They all did a wonderful job at this movie. And, um, yeah. Mary Poppins I've seen hundreds of times, but just to know how Mary Poppins came about, yeah, it's well worth it. And what reminds me, I have to actually get a copy of Mary Poppins. Maybe soon. Um, this one, I didn't feel like buying these two movies um separate so i went the import way and got them together uh national treasure and national treasure 2 and uh if you can see on the back one of them is b only and one of them is abc but um national treasure 2 is is b um, when you play them in the machine it doesn't it doesn't really matter. It plays. So, yeah, you know, if you're ever looking for this online, you see that why is one B and the other one's all region? It doesn't really matter. It's well worth getting. Um, the artwork is less to be desired, but um, yeah. I thought it came with a slip, but it didn't. But uh, it's worth it because it saves space. All right. Uh, here's one of my movies that it's an underrated Disney live action film and that is John Carter it's a 3D version but um, I got it for free off of Disney Movie Rewards yeah so um, this storyline was absolutely fantastic at the beginning of the movie you have um, he's in the Civil War all of a sudden he's transported onto another planet and stuff uh, Brian Cranston makes a little special appearance at the beginning of the movie and um yeah it's just 
it's just a great sci-fi movie and the way it was made and um, I don't know why people didn't like it I found it enjoyable and uh, it's it's long it's 132 minutes but I mean I, I, I enjoyed it I don't know other people be kind of a, I don't know why it didn't make money it's it's great I would have loved to see a sequel to this but uh, whatever all right grabbing another stack here um ah, got like three sports ones in a row here um this one I just actually got from uh, Amazon not too long ago the greatest game ever played and uh, I haven't got a chance to see this yet but it is a Bill Paxton film mm-hmm um, rest in peace Bill Paxton and um, is Bill Paxton in here I don't know I don't think he's in the movie but uh, yeah I can't wait to see this this is before Shia LaBeouf went crazy so next Mark Wahlberg in uh, Invincible uh, inspired by a true story this one I found at a, a Goodwill for basically like two bucks so I said yeah sure why not um, and looked inside it was basically brand new and um, just didn't have its Disney rewards and I said shit yeah I'm gonna pick that up <laughs> so yeah another sports movie for me to check out third if you want to consider this a sports movie I guess you could is dog sledding sports eight below um, inspired by a true story uh, with Rest in peace, Paul Walker. But this, right here, when I found it, I was like, really? Good price. Um, was, I think it was like almost brand new. Yeah, it was almost brand new. Except for the fact that I got this at Second and Charles and they sticked their stupid security stickers. And, and these are a oh, pain in the ass to get off. Pain in the ass. And so lucky thing I stuck it in the inside. Because I had cases at Second and Charles where they put them on the outside. Man, it took a lot of effort to get that off. But then you're left with scratches on the case. So, whatever. Eight Below, Paul Walker. Another one of my childhood favorites. And it took me a while to get this. But I found a brand new factory seal that... Um, second and Charles. It was bed nods of brood and sticks. And, um, brand new factory sealed, so I said, why not? And it was at a good price, too. I think it was like, uh, seven something. Seven bucks or something like that. Um, and at the time when I was there, it was like a buy two, get one free sale. So, it, it all worked out. Um, it was from 1971, I believe. Uh, Bonanza Bruises, best special visual effects 1971. Yeah, um, kind of doesn't look like a 71 movie. It kind of looks a little bit from the 60s, but eh, it's good. Rated G, good family flick. Now, this is a live action film with elements of animation, kind of like Mary Poppins. So, it is well worth checking out. If you have never checked this movie out, check it out. It's a great family flick. Um, here's another one I haven't not had the chance to uh, check out. Again, it's live action mixed up with um, animation. This time it's CG animation. And it's a thick one, too. I got this, um, I think it was brand new when I bought this. And uh, at a ridiculously low price. Uh, at Second and Charles, because they had so many of these, they had like three or four copies of this thing, and I grabbed the best one out of all of them. And it's a Jerry Bruckheimer, I think. Where's it at? Yeah, Jerry Bruckheimer film. And, um, 
yeah, it's got such voices as, uh, well, the two main live action people are Will Arnett and Zach Galifianakis. The, uh, the voices, you got Nicolas Cage, Sam Rockwell, John Favreau, Penelope Cruz, uh, Steve Buscemi, Tracy Morgan. Um, that's it. But, yeah, I gotta check this out one day. See? Again, with the, um, rainbow, the rainbow slip, that means it's a first edition slip. Mm -hmm. So you learn something from Movie Edge. Okay, next is, uh, one of one of my particular favorite movies, it, it surprised me how good this was. And it is Enchanted. Um, first time I seen this, we were in, um, I want to say California for a wedding. And uh, we were in a hotel room, me and my wife. And um, we had some downtime. My wife was taking a nap. So I, I thought, mm, why not check it out? It was on TV. And uh, I couldn't shut it off. It was an excellent, excellent movie. Um, I believe at the beginning is a little, it's animation, and then they go into the real world. And uh, yeah, I have a I have a thing for Amy Adams. She's cute. Uh, <laughs> uh, stars in this movie is Amy Adams, Patrick Dempsey. You got uh, Susan Sarandon. Susan Saran didn't, just to name a few people. And, um, yeah, if you haven't checked this movie out yet, it, it, it's great. It is just a gem. It's an underrated film from Disney that, um, I don't know, it's, it's really great. It's got a bunch, if you could focus in on that, it's got a bunch of uh, extra features on that as well. So, Enchanted. Coming up next, one of my favorite live-action movies besides Tron and the other ones I said, but this happened to be one of my favorite movies. When I first seen it, I, would, I just fell in love with this movie. Haunted Mansion. It had everything a matinee movie should have. You see this at the theater on a rainy Saturday or Sunday afternoon, or even on TV on a rainy day. This movie had it all. It had the, um, you know, the ghosts. It had the skeletons. It had a graveyard. You know, it had the haunted mansion. You know, and it was just a fantastic movie. Um, I heard that they're going to remake this. Uh, if they do, uh, I don't know. I mean, I think Eddie Murphy was a perfect, perfect cast and uh in this movie not to mention the fact that um you know the rest of the rest of the cast just just killed it i mean they were just awesome in this movie and um yeah it came yeah when this came out on blu-ray i got it i didn't get it brand new nah i got this at second and charles this is all the special features there was Okay, I had the DVD because I wanted to replace the DVD. And uh, the DVD came with this DVD guide. And you have all the track listings on there, right? Plus, this is all the special features that were on there. Stuff like um, photo gallery, uh, history of the haunted mansion attraction. Um, bloopers, deleted scenes, uh, haunted mansion stuff, visual, virtual tour, uh, audio commentary. It had a hell of a lot more than the Blu-ray. So what I did was I kept the DVD and made this a Blu-ray digital combo pack, a Blu-ray DVD combo pack. The artwork is great on both of them. I like this artwork better. It's the DVD artwork. But um, I figured I'm not going to get rid of it if there's special features on it. That's just stupid. Um, now I can't put this back. Um, yeah, I mean, The Haunted Mansion, if you have not seen this, and it's your favorite ride at Disney, check it out. 
I did for the first time uh, 2017 I think I went and I was on this ride now it was kind of dark in there I thought it was going to be more you could see the ghosts a little bit better in, in the ballroom dancing and stuff but it was actually kind of dark for me I was like hmm but the first room that you go in where it shrinks down that was that was amazing I like that um, and of course when you're looking in the mirror and you see the ghost he's in the same car as you that, that's pretty cool so the haunted mansion highly recommend that movie but um, if you're all about the bonus features get the DVD buy the blu-ray put the DVD in a blu-ray case like I did there you go uh, here's another movie I seen I think think was on the Disney Channel or Stars. I don't remember. Nicolas Cage, uh, Jerry Bruckheimer film, Sorcerer's Apprentice, off of the um, Fantasia, I guess. This is supposed to be from Fantasia. They had the dancing brooms and everything else. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a good movie. I really wish they would have made a sequel to this, but uh, if you like Harry Potter movies, this is great. This is a great movie for that. And uh, Nicolas Cage was actually really great in this movie as well. Um, yeah. Um, I'm trying to see who the other people were in this movie. Uh, J. Baroche, I think his name is. Uh, I'm going to murder his last name, but... Oh, there he is. He's in a lot of um, Apatel movies and stuff like that. Um, the rest of the people I don't recognize in this movie, but... This was a great flick. And, of course, artwork. Say that. This was a great, a great um, Disney flick. Why didn't it get a lot more attention than it should have. I don't know. The critics, man, they pay in a lot of stuff that's good. I don't know. Um, still have more to go, but um, this movie, first time I've seen it, great, great flick. Bedtime Stories, Adam Sandler. Um, and uh, this one had a lot of cameos in it as well. Um... Had uh, Rob Schneider in it. Uh, it had uh, I think Ellen Corbett is in there. He's like in every single Adam Sandler film. Um, Courtney Courtney Cox is in this movie. Uh, Lucy Lawless. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Um, Russell Brand. Um, Guy Pierce. I mean, there's a ton of people. The actual cameos, though, I can't, I can't remember. Besides, um, um, Rob Schneider, of course. But uh, this is a great film. Um, family film. Nothing bad. Nothing dirty. It's got this like CG little uh, guinea pig in there. It's funny. Um, yeah, if you haven't checked this out, don't let, you know, don't let, it's bedtime stories, it's an Adam Sandler movie, it sucks. Don't jump on that bandwagon. Adam Sandler makes some really good stuff. You know, you stop listening to, or you stop watching an Adam Sandler movie because other people said, oh, this movie stinks, this movie sucks. Don't do that. Don't, don't, don't get, watch it for yourself. You know, review it for yourself. Adam Sandler movies, yeah, there are some out there that they're kind of, eh. But, I mean, there's a lot of good ones that he made as well. So, you know, don't don't be a sheep following everyone else. Okay, it's last stack. No, 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 second to the last stack. Last stack, it's right there. Second to the last stack is, it's going to be all Muppet movies. They're live action. Yeah. Um, the Muppets with Amy Adams. 
uh, Jason Siegel and Chris Cooper. And uh, yeah, first time I seen this movie. Didn't really like it as much as the original uh, Muppet movie that came out in the 70s, I want to say. The Muppet movie, the Muppet movie, I have it right here. And of course it doesn't say because it's a Disney release. Anyway, yeah, I like the original Muppet movie better. This one was okay, but it just seemed like he, tr like Jason Siegel tried too hard to um, make this movie. He's a big Muppets fan, but uh, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of extras on there. Look at all the extras. That is impressive. And uh, there was supposed to be a short on here, but I uh, didn't see it. And, uh, yeah, didn't really care for it that much. But after a second viewing, a lot of the cameos made me smile. John Karninski was in one of them. I, I love that guy. John Karninski, if I'm pronouncing his last name wrong, I'm sorry. Um, here's a sequel. It is Muppets Most Wanted. Now, this one I kind of liked better than the original. Don't know why. Um, it had a great cast on here. Ty Burrell, Tina Fey, Ricky Gervais. And it actually had... Uh, it's not listed on here. No, it's not actually listed on here. But there was a WWE wrestler in here. Um, Hornswoggle. He was actually in here. I don't know the guy's real name. But, yeah, he was in here, and that was a surprise to see him. That was a breath. I was like, wow, he's in this. You know, he's pretty good. Uh, 124 minutes, though. This is a long freaking movie. Um, yeah. It's a good movie. I don't like the fact that the original, all the original Muppet movies... Um, we're all G-rated, except for these two new ones, PG-rated. They're making them more adult humor, more rude humor. That's a kind of a turn-off for me, because when I grew up with the Muppets, the Muppet Show and all that stuff, yeah. But, they're still good. Uh, let's do, yeah, let's do this for next. The original Muppet movie. Now, Disney did not make this. This was from another company. And they actually got the rights to this when they bought the Jim Henson, uh, some of the Jim Henson stuff. Um, they bought the Muppets, the rights to Muppets. And um, I think it was a great buy for them because they get these movies. And there's also a place in Walt Disney World where the Muppets perform and you have a Muppet 3D movie stuff like that there. And, uh, yeah. And I was watching a video earlier today about uh, Disney and why they bought 20th Century Fox and they were going over all these companies that Disney owns. And, yeah, you know what? They forgot about the Muppets. They bought the rights to the Muppets. So, yeah. Pretty good. Could have put a good deal. Uh, uh, Disney. There's some deleted scenes and some featurettes and some other good stuff there. Um, yeah, I haven't seen this one in years. A lot of great, a lot of great cameos in here. Uh, there we go. A lot of great cameos in here. It's not going to be listed, is it? I know Bob Hope was in there. Oh, here we go. Listed. The cameos that were listed in this movie. Edgar Bergen, which is um, a puppet. Whatever. Uh, uh, Milton Burrow, Mel Brooks, James Corbin, or... 
can't even see that. Yeah, well. Dom DeLuise, Elliot Gould, Bob Holt, Madeline Kahn, uh, Carol Kane, Cloris Leachman, Steve Martin, Richard Pryor, Telly Savalas, Orson Welles, Paul Williams, and I guess George Burns is done in here. But anyway, this, if you want to see a great one, if you want to see a better one than what Disney put out, yeah, you have to see the original one of this. Next, I'll do these two. This one, they're both uh, one's a Disney, and one was actually owned by another company. The one from Disney is Muppet Treasure Island with um, Muppet Treasure Island with God, I forgot his name. It was with um, Tim Curry, yeah, the great Tim Curry. And Muppet, Muppet's, uh, The Great Muppet Caper, which is one of my favorites. Um, this one I really liked, how they put two movies on one uh, collection, which they should have done with all of them, but yeah. Um, there's some fun stuff right there. Now, if you're a, if you're a big Muppets fan... You'll love Tre Muppet Treasure Island. Great Muppet Caper, you'll love too. It's a lot of, it's a lot of like like um, uh, mystery kind of who stole the jewel and stuff like that. So, yeah, great. And finally, from Disney, uh, Disney's The Muppets uh, Christmas Carol. This one is a great one, but when they put it on Blu-ray. They deleted a scene, um, and they didn't even put it in the uh, in the special features. It was a scene where Michael Caine, I think, was singing or something, um, and it didn't it didn't fit the movie for some reason. They said, and um, but what I did, but I got I found a copy of the original on a DVD. And I put it inside. It's in full screen, but at least I get to see the deleted scene that was not put on here. This is the full movie. This is pretty much an edit. Um, but it's a great quality. Uh, yeah. Great Muppet. Uh, Muppet's Christmas Carol. Yeah. Okay, now finally, we're going to do some DVDs that should have been um, on Blu-ray by now, but, uh, you know, start off with a Christmas movie, which I just got uh, this year. I'll be home for Christmas with Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Um, he was a great actor. Yeah. Uh, what's he doing lately? don't know. Um, had Jessica Biel in this. It had Gary Cole in it. Um, rest of the people I don't recognize. You know, it's a great family movie. Um, special features, just a theatrical trailer, basically. But it's a fun, it's a fun, fun movie. To check out at Christmas time. Alright, this one. This one here. Why it didn't get a Blu-ray release by now, which will probably, my guess, it'll be on a, um, a Blu-ray um, exclusive for Disney Movie Club. I'm talking about uh, Around the World in 80 Days with Jackie Chan and, uh, what's the other guy's name? Steve Coogan? Or, yeah, Stephen Coogan. Yeah, um, he's from um, Night Museum, I think. And uh, there's a lot of great cameos in this, especially uh, Rob Schneider, which I was shocked to see in there. Arnold Schwarzenegger is in there. Um, both the Wilson brothers, Luke Wilson, Owen Wilson are in there. 
and there's some others too I just I can't remember them right now but um yeah great film to check out um, even you know if you have to buy the DVD right now it's a great film to check out um, it is it's two hours uh, two hours long and it was actually a Walden Media um, release um, it was Walt Disney Pictures and Walden Media release and uh, it is um, I don't know what's like <laughs> but <laughs> there is all the bonus features yeah and if they put this on blu-ray they're not gonna have any of these if they put it on this the um, exclusive blu-ray thing uh, the insides beautiful look at that you got your track listings and you got your disc so yeah and there's a lot of deleted scenes on here that they cut out which they should have left in but uh yeah if you haven't seen this movie i highly recommend you you hunt it down and check it out it might be on netflix it might be all right another one that should have made it to blu-ray by now disney walt disney's holes shia labeouf he was excellent in this movie this kid did a really good job too and um yeah it is about these kids you know and um they're kind of like um prison inmates kind of thing because they're they're for like um because they're bad kids for some reason but uh and they have to dig these holes and uh Sigourney Weaver's character is in charge you had John Voight, uh, Patricia Arquette's in there, and uh, Tim Blake Nelson. I have no clue who that is. Um, this, again, artwork, beautiful. Um, this movie is just, it, it's, it's fantastic. It, it is. Um, I think this is off a book as well. I'm not sure. It's all the bonus features. If you could read that, I don't know. But, um, yeah, Holes, great movie. Disney should have put this out in a special edition Blu-ray by now. They didn't. Another movie where Shia LaBeouf was not crazy yet. Here's one that, don't know why, but it should have made it to, um... It should have made it to Blu-ray by now, especially for the special effects alone. And I'm talking about the black hole. And I think I think this got nominated for best special effects uh, the year it came out, which I don't know because it's not written on here, or it won the Academy Award for best special effects. I don't know. I have to look that up, but um. <clears throat> it had um, Anthony Perkins in here from the Psycho movies, uh, Robert Foster, Joseph Buttons, and the other people I don't know. Ernest Borgnine, he's in this. Rest in peace. Um, yeah, this movie, it's it. I haven't seen this in a long time. Um, artwork on the inside I got this one used and um, from cinema sickness and uh, yeah this movie I could never find in the wild oh no this movie really hard to find um, I don't even think it's on Netflix or anywhere online but if you have never checked this movie out and you came across a copy on blu-ray or um, blu-ray DVD yeah, I highly recommend this. It is a great sci-fi movie. Uh, great special effects. And, uh... It's just one of those movies that... Why it didn't get any more attention than what it did... I think this came out in 81. I'm not quite sure on that. It's only 98 minutes, but um, 
yeah, I mean, underrated film. Should get more attention nowadays. And uh, Disney blows it off like nothing. Last one is technically a Paramount movie, but it was a Paramount uh, collaboration with Walt Disney. What am I talking about? Popeye. But in the UK and other places around the around the world where they release DVDs and stuff, they consider this, it, it has the Walt Disney logo on top. This one just happened to be owned by Paramount. This is not the original artwork, actually. This is like the re-release. Uh, re this is the original artwork right here. I actually have the soundtrack to this on vinyl, and it's been not in that great of condition, the, the cardboard, but I should take it and frame it. Um, you have uh, Robin Williams in his first movie, Shelley Duvall, and... Um, yeah, uh, the, the the little baby that played Sweet Pea, that was actually Robert Altman's, um, I want to say it was his baby, it was his child, and he stuck him in the movie. Um, but yeah, he's related to the director Robert Altman in this. And um, great movie. Um, and if in case you don't believe me, <laughs> about there it is alright in case you don't believe me take a look at that what does it say Paramount Pictures and Disney Pictures so there you go proof that this was a Disney film it's great should be on Blu-ray by now but it's not and rest in peace Robin Williams That's it. I'm done. And that was my whole live action Disney collection uh, in this series. Um, don't know if I'm going to be getting any more in anytime soon. But if I do, you know, I'll do an update video. Um, also, um, it's not really under the Disney label. But I am going to be doing a Touchstone and Hollywood Pictures collection. And that one I might break up into two because it's I got a lot from them. And I'm just getting more every day. So, yeah, I might do that um, under this Disney collection series. So look forward to that. And... Um, I think that's it for now. But uh, if you have any comments or questions for me, Movie Edge, please go to Instagram and uh, it's Movie Edge 1. That's it. Get a hold of me there. Or you could comment, question below, give it a thumbs up, and please subscribe. That's it. Till next time, this is Movie Edge signing off. Movies are your best entertainment.